Hey YouTube, it's the Dungeon Master back with another video. This week we're gonna work on my Patreon poll for the month of April, which is a carnival themed uh, set featuring some scatter terrain and some other settings for the table. Uh, we're gonna do this in multiple parts. It's gonna take a few weeks to get through, so bear with me while we uh, go piece by piece, part by part to do this. This week we're gonna focus on some small carnival games. I've got three of them ready to go and uh, next week we'll do something a little bit bigger and the week after that I'm hoping we'll wrap it up. So three weeks in total, I'm hoping maybe four. We'll see what's happening. Um, so stick around after the rip and we'll get right into it. Okay, moving into our first carnival piece, we're going to do the test of strength first, or at least get started on it. Um, we're gonna start with a one inch uh, craft stick and cut the end off to make it flat so that we have a square edge to work with. And I'm gonna save one of the round edges so that we can use that for the top of the rear panel. Here I cut off the ends of uh, a popsicle stick to use to balance the the lever that's going to move the the hammer that rings the bell. It's, it's inert, it's not going to actually be moving parts, but you know, you got to create that illusion of reality. So I um, I, tra I tried to make it look as you know close to a how I imagine a test of strength carnival game would be. To make the main, um, I don't know what you would call it, the main path of travel for the bell ringer to head up the uh, the pole. We'll just call it the the bell pole for now. I had some of these epoxy stickers laying around that I was going to use for another project, and I figured they'd be perfect for the bell, so I glued some of them down. I didn't just want to stick them down, so I used some super glue as well to make sure that they stuck down well. It worked okay. Um, just it was a little frosted because I got some of the super glue on top so just be a little careful if you get it on top of these stickers. They're clear, they're pretty solid, um, and they stick really well to each other. But like I said, I just wanted to make sure that they wouldn't go anywhere. So I definitely use the super glue. Just make sure, like I said, that it doesn't get all over the place because it, it makes a little bit of a mess in it. You might have to clean it up. I didn't fortunately, but if it frosts up too badly, you'd have to scrape it off. drill real quick to bore out the hole in the small pieces of popsicle stick that I cut off earlier for the, uh, the counter uh, lever, I guess. Uh, not the counter lever, what would you call it? Um, the, the main axle that's going to hold the plate that's going to move, the, that would move the hammer up on one of these devices. So um, just being very careful, you can't really see it obviously because I'm blocking it with my fat hands, but when you uh, drill into this stuff, since it's on the grain, just go slow, take your time, otherwise you're gonna split it, and you still might split it anyway, so just keep your super glue handy to glue it back together if it does break apart. It'll work, and uh, you can clean it up so that it looks nice afterwards. all the time looking for craft materials while I'm out and about and you know when I'm at the grocery store that's no exception so I found these um, f what do you call them, hors d'oeuvre forks and um, they're made out of bamboo but uh, they're 
pretty strong and they have the nice little paddle on the end you can use them for oars uh, for crenellations on the side of buildings dm scotty has them in some of his videos i've seen him use them they're really awesome and uh, i decided i was going to use one of these to make the lever for my uh test of strength here and uh, i felt like it was a good size it was a good shape i felt like um it matched the piece a little bit and it was just odd enough that it would work for the type of aesthetic that I'm going for with this carnival. And I wanted to embellish it a little bit too. So I found these beads at Walmart and um, they, they're perfect. They were kind of uh, hollow. They had, you know, all kinds of openings on them. I figured one of these uh, cylindrical ones would be perfect for the, uh, the bell ringer. I was going to take out another one to put on top too, but I decided that it was good enough the way it was. Now these were all um, hollow, like I said, but they also, this uh, cylindrical one, has a uh, split down the side of it. So um, the plan is to open it up and use it on the bell pole to connect it to it. Since I had already glued it down, I had to open it up. If I had put, been smart and put this on beforehand, it probably would have looked a little better, but um, it came out fine in the end. So as always, if it comes out fine in the end, it, it doesn't matter how, it, how I got there. We're going to do a little bit of a throwback here and go back to the Dwarven Trap Puzzle and pull out a, a small uh, hammer to use for the mallet for the, the carnival game. And we're going to kind of use the leftover bits from the wooden from, from the balsa dowel to make the head and use the toothpicks to make the handle and it's the right size it matches up perfectly with a 28 millimeter especially since you know it's a carnival game it's supposed to be a little exaggerated so I pulled out the pin vise found a bit that matched the size of my popsicle stick and drilled a hole through the center of the little piece of leftover dowel So now we're going to get working on the next uh, part of the carnival. We're going to work on a ring toss uh, game. And it's going to start with some uh, one inch sections of the square balsa dowel and some one and a half inch sections of the three inch balsa sheet. And again, we're just going to notch out some pieces for the posts on the corners of this uh, this carnival, particular carnival game. And then just go ahead and attach everything with some CA glue. So you want to try to make some kind of like a table for the center here. So it's it's like in a, a one inch by two inch piece of the thin balsa sheet and then a couple of strips uh, beneath it for just simplistic legs, just something to, to balance it on. And um, just glue them together with some CA glue and it should fit right in the middle of the center of the main uh, body of the piece that we made just a second ago. And uh, I went ahead and cut up some scrap pieces of the uh, balsa dowel to use for some bracing for the corner posts. I felt like they really weren't strong enough and just like I did on the um, test of strength, it needed to be 
bolstered up just slightly so just taking my time cutting slowly because this stuff crushes and splits really easily um, I just tried to cut some bits on a 45 degree angle and then just glue them into the corners where they met I did it uh, I made eight of them two for each corner and it worked out really well and just go ahead and use some CA glue to attach the wings that we made earlier and uh, just make sure they're just a little bit lower than the central table so that they look uh, you know like a game surface like you pick up the rings and toss them onto the upper or the raised surface um, I had originally decided to use some bottles for the ring toss but that was a little bit too mundane for the theme of the carnival and I wanted to spice it up a little bit so I ended up using something else and um, I ended up saving these for a later project they're just basically uh, toothpicks and some metal beads that I got from Walmart um, you just cut them down fit them in and uh, glue them with a little bit of CA glue and then you cut off the tops and you have some instant bottles and then you just hit the top with a little bit of brown wash and it's like a, a stopper or a cork and it's really well it works really well I got the uh, the technique from um, the uh, the DMG info which is another great YouTube channel that you should check out if you haven't yet you can actually see here this is a shot of the uh, the two pieces that I had done so far and they were looking just awesome I, I love making stuff in this small detail this is really where I, I like to craft and I love to put all the small details into things and I love that little hammer I love the the test of strength thing and just when they're done painted as you'll see in a little bit they look even better So not being satisfied with the bottles, I decided to take some more of my Citadel skulls that I have and uh, use the some of the orc skulls that came inside of it. Actually, I'm not even sure these are orc skulls. I think these might be chaos skulls, but in either case, they're just gigantic skulls, um, fanged skulls, and I thought they were the perfect aesthetic for this. That and, you know, I used most of my human skulls on my um, Mesoamerican temple build. So I didn't have many left and I wanted to save what, what few left that I had for something else. So um, I decided I was going to put uh, some dowel in the top of the skull. So I had to do a little bit of uh, trepanning, which uh, you know is an old technique for bloodletting, uh, drilling holes in skulls. So I had to do a little bit of uh, home surgery on these guys to get them to uh, accommodate a wooden dowel in the top of their head, something to hold the uh, the rings, you know, when they're tossed to give them that look. Otherwise, you'd just be throwing rings at skulls. And, you know, while that might be fun in certain circles, I'm sure at the carnival they'd like to uh, get more of your money. So they want to make it a little bit harder. Next, I wanted to attach some uh, flagpoles to the tops of the uh, posts on the four corners, kind of, uh, you know, advertising the attraction at the carnival. And while I got the posts in, I never did manage to make the flags. At the time of uh, editing, the flags are not done, so I hope to have those done by the time the next video uh, goes to air. And after that's all assembled, uh, I'm going to black bomb my skulls. Okay, for the next part, I wanted to have something uh, unique, something I haven't really seen before. So I wanted to make a dunk tank uh, for the carnival. Um, and I did, uh, I, one of the suggestions of my uh, patrons was to make a uh, kissing booth, but I didn't really want to do that. I didn't think that that fit the aesthetic of this carnival it's supposed to be a dark carnival um, if anything it probably would have been a kissing booth uh, helmed by a mind flare or something ridiculous like that 
but um, that's a little bit too out of the the course of how the adventure that I had planned is but if that's something you wanted to do you could uh, this is a container from Parmesan cheese that I had used to try to make a filter for my crappy airbrush um, so I decided to just cut that apart and use one of the center rings for my tank um, be careful with this. this this gave me some trouble trying to cut and I probably just did it wrong so just with a little bit more careful planning I probably could have cut it at the uh, the top part first and then cut lower but um, I figured out a good technique eventually. so I had this uh, leftover piece of quarter inch um, 3x3 uh, XPS foam and I just took the center ring from the Parmesan cheese container and pressed it into the foam to give me uh, you know the ring where I'm gonna put the actual tank and then um, I removed it scored along the line and, pu and put it back in I scored along the line with my hobby knife and now you can see here after doing that um, I'm tracing along the outside very lightly just to kind of freehand draw my uh, metal banding for the outside and uh, to do that I'm just gonna make repeated passes uh, continually turning and cutting turning and cutting until I get the shape that I want and then I'll take it off after and trim it up and sand it with some sandpaper to make it round. So I mentioned in a previous video uh, how I had left the glue gun on for a weekend and that turned the glue yellow. Well, I never emptied the old glue out of the glue gun, so that's why the glue is yellow here. And um, I'm going to be doing something later on to hide this, but um, I had already started with it and didn't want to rip it all apart, so I just said screw it and just kept going. Um, I can always work with what I've got, so I just I figure out a way to uh, cover it up after. I had wanted to put in some metal, uh, some riveting around the outside of the, the tank, so um, I put some pins in some glue. I dipped them in some PVA glue and then uh, stuck them into the foam. The tank was a little bit uneven in the recess, so in some spots I had to push the pins through the plastic. So be very careful um, that you don't, you know, stab yourself in the finger and that you don't, you know, destroy the foam in the process. Just, you know, firm, steady, straight pressure and um, take your time with it and it'll come out looking nice. Next we've got some strips of quarter inch XPS that I had uh, laying around from a, another project that I just cut down to size. Uh, they're very thin, they're probably only a couple sixteenths of an inch thick. Um, and I'm using these to finish the banding along the outside of the tank. This will also help reinforce it slightly. Um, I just hot glued them on and I left them twice the length of the tank because I'm going to put some mesh at the top for like a, uh, a fencing like you would see at, an, at a modern carnival, a little bit more of a modern carnival anyway. Next up we have some uh, black plastic mesh that I got at Michael's and um, I measured the distance from the top of the tank to the top of the, the foam supports and decided to cut them just slightly under, probably about a quarter of an inch. Um, and I just used the, the grating itself to measure and cut from there. Um, I ended up recessing the grating on the inside of the tank for reinforcement because those foam bits on the outside work very strong. So. Um, I cut maybe about eight inches of granny grating and then uh, trimmed it down afterwards. So you'll be able to see some of that process here. In my search to try to fuse the two ends of the granny grating together, I decided to hot glue them after some experimentation. Um, 
I had tried to use the um, uh, CA glue and baking soda technique to try to get it to be more solid, but I don't really have a decent activator and it wouldn't hold up as well as I had hoped. It needs to be something a lot more sturdy than that. So if you guys uh, know of a way that I could fuse the two ends of this to make this perfectly uh, round, leave in the comments below. Let me know what you would have done differently with that because I have struggled with it just a little bit to try to get it to stay flat and it ended up still even uh, warped just a little bit in the end. And you can see it there how it kind of teardrops a little bit. I didn't really like that. I wanted that to be uh, round. So next I'm going to cut out a slit in the grating for where I'm going to put the trap and I don't mean trap like a you know a D and D trap. I mean like the trap platform. So when you know somebody throws a ball or whatever at the mechanism and releases it, it would drop the person in the tank into the the water. I think for the purposes of my carnival, though, the person who's in the dunk tank is probably going to be dunked into like piranha water or something because it's it's funnier that way to me. I guess I don't know. So I just removed a section of the grating. Um, at an appropriate height, right up, right at the top of the tank level was uh, was fine for me. Um, I ha you can see a little bit of the the black grating sticking below the lip of the tank, and that's that's where I glued it to um, to keep it uh, to keep it centered in the tank, but to also um, reinforce it to make it strong. And this thing was rock solid after I did that, so it came out uh, came out looking pretty good after that. And I just, uh, I went in and I cut a couple lines on the uh, support uh, of the craft stick, the, cr the supporting craft stick, and then just chipped it out with, uh, with my hobby knife to give it kind of a um, tongue and groove, somewhere to stick in so that when I glued it, it would, I didn't have to use hot glue because I didn't want it to be, uh, lose a little bit of the detail. Alright folks, this process needs no introduction. This is the Mod Podge and black paint step and this stuff, there's, uh, if I, until I find something that works better, this is what I'm going to use for base coating my foam, so bear with me while we get this underway. I covered it in a little black paint afterwards too for good measure, just to make sure that it had a decent, um, you know, obfuscation of the pink material. This is also a good time to point out that when you're doing this kind of thing, make sure you paint the back side of the foam because I didn't and I ended up having to reach inside my tank after putting little bits of uh, black paint on the inside to block out the pink from where it showed through. So word to the wise, just a, a precautionary tale. Just try to paint both sides of the foam before you glue it on. You'll notice uh, the sudden appearance of some new pieces of foam around the base of the uh, tank. Um, and that's what I did to cover up the, um, the glue on the inside so that you wouldn't see the yellow uh, sticking out on the inside. That worked perfectly to cover it all up. And um, now I'm just going to paint it up with a bronze color and then um, do a you know a patina wash and a little bit of a black wash and uh, call it a day on that part.
welcome back to another episode of the Dungeon Master's Rules for Life, aka Don't Do What I Do. Um, I love my Mod Podge Dimensional Magic, but it is no good for doing anything very thick, and that's what I learned doing this. And I was going to try to fill my tank with it, so I put this you know, little drop of blue water, a uh, little drop of blue paint in it to try to you know, color the water blue. I ended up using the wrong color blue, so it came out milky instead of looking like water, first of all. And second of all, I should have not put the paint in at all. And thirdly, um, when you're going to do anything above like a simple lake effect or a simple water effect, this stuff does not cure quickly. This stuff is, at the time of recording this voiceover and editing this video, this thing has been sitting in the basement for two and a half days and it is still liquid. It has not cured yet. So keep that in mind. Beware. Use a resin or something else. Don't do what I did here. I tried to save myself a little bit of time in painting these other pieces. I, um, instead of basing them with my traditional, uh, you know, burnt umber brown, I decided to go with a uh, espresso spray paint, a, one of the um, uh, Krylons that I have lying around. And this did save me a lot of time. You just have to use. You can see some of the spots on here are shiny, and that's where I was just a little bit too liberal with it. But um, on some of the other pieces, you'll see the uh, the color. It, it worked perfectly. It really did. I'm going to do it again um, if I ever need to paint something quickly. Um, the stuff dried fast, and, um, and it worked well. So you just have to spray it from a little further away and use a light dusting rather than go to town on the piece. So I went with a brighter color scheme for this uh, set than I originally uh, envisioned. It worked out great. I, I just um, I used the, the white and red pinstripe uh, pattern that I've seen many times myself when I've gone to the carnival and seen uh, tests like these. And, uh, most of my pieces are my, you know, they're my take on things and my, you know, my imagination. I didn't use any reference photos for these uh, pieces. So these are just uh, colors that I picked just from my head um, and uh, it worked out great. The color scheme was pretty awesome. I like how they, uh, they look on the table. So um, combined with the other pieces, I'm going to try to make them, when, when I get everything together for this set, I'm going to try to make everything kind of have a similar tone to it. I'm going to try to use some other colors, obviously, other than just red and white. But to kind of give it the same kind of pinstripey look, I think it'll be great when it's on the table with everything all said and done. Now I'm going to try to make a, a little bit of a, a handle wrap around on this uh, hammer to try to make it look a little bit more uh, embellished. So I'm just going to take some craft string and super glue it around and a twist around the handle and uh, then I'll add a brown wash to it later.
thanks for watching the video. If uh, you liked what you see here, head on over to Patreon where you get to vote on cool things like this video. Uh, you get to participate in the polls that help decide what content I do on the channel. And um, if you like the video, uh, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment below. Um, if you have any interesting ideas, anything you'd like to see on the channel, let me know and uh, we can see we, about uh, getting it made for you. I got a couple of things in the works, some things that have already been suggested to me on the channel. Uh, unfortunately, life is a little bit hectic right now, so I'm trying to burn this content out as quickly as I can while still being able to you know, have some time for myself and whatnot. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, and uh, support the dungeon master, blah, blah, and fur de fur de -le. I was on a roll. Now I'm on a bun, because my goose is cooked. Also, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my supporters over on Patreon for this month. We've got uh, the, the Wild Die Podcast, uh, Nathan Rameka, Bad Rabbit, uh, Josie Easton, Cheryl Lowe, Crafts and Minis. We've got uh, Evil Trocell, Mr. John Myers in the house, my brother, and um, Miss uh, Jeanette Briggs, good friend of mine. Everybody, you, uh, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much for being a supporter of the channel. I really appreciate it. We're getting up there in subscribers, uh, starting to get a little bit more attention for the channel. I'm hoping to God that this doesn't change anything about what it is that I'm doing here. Um, it's nuts. I, I can't believe that it's being as successful as it was. I remember when the channel first had 28 subscribers and I was very excited at that. So to even just, I, I'm happy. Thank you so much, everybody, for being a part of this and helping me. It's really awesome. So stick around. More content coming. Peace.